Hey guys and welcome to Respect Your Intellect. I'm John and in this video we'll be doing our first edition of Flat Earth Debunked by watching a Flat Earther debunk himself. Let's get started! All right, so let's start off by checking out his argument. All right, so I just finished up at the gym. Let's talk about chemtrails and the sun's path in the sky. Okay, first, chemtrails don't exist. That's just made up by a conspiracy theorists who don't understand what it is and made up some elaborate deception instead. The actual term is contrail and is short for condensation trail. And that's all it is, condensation. If you want further explanation on contrails, write it in the comments to let me know and I'll make a video dedicated to that. Now, as soon as I come out, I see this chemtrail sprayed all the way across the sky. Alright, and then I see the plane in the distance continuing to spray. Again, not a spray, just condensation. But let's take a look at this in comparison to the sun's movement across the sky. Now let's assume that the plane maintained its altitude at about 27,000 feet or so from there. Now looking off into the distance it looks like the plane came up like it rose in the uh, distance like it rose from the horizon when in actuality it was at 27,000 feet the entire time and as it gets closer to my perspective it seems to rise higher in the sky and then as it goes off into the distance it appears to go lower on the horizon or set. Okay, so at least you have some understanding of perspective. Let's keep going. Let's consider the sun taking a similar path. Do we really assume that the sun changes its altitude in the sky? No, absolutely not. Throughout the day the sun maintains the same altitude. Okay, so first of all your very first assumption is faulty. It looks like the whole basis for your argument is as, as if the sun was about as high as the condensation trail. This is probably already enough to make the rest of what you have to say irrelevant, but let's continue anyway. Then there's the fact that you state the sun doesn't change its altitude. The sun's altitude is considered to be the angle of the sun relative to the horizon for the observer. So for everyone's individual perspective, the sun is at its lowest points at sunrise and sunset before going over or below the horizon, and it's at its highest point in the sky around noon. This is where the term high noon comes from. Let's continue. But just the same as the chemtrail shows here, it can appear to set but beyond the horizon. Now if that chemtrail uh, line was still... Um, you know, visible in the far distance or spraying from that distance, it would look like the airplane rose from the horizon. But it was at 27,000 feet the whole time. It's just a matter of perspective. So it goes higher because it's closer to my position. And then in the distance, it seems to start going down again. But it was at the same altitude. And the same thing happens with this guy. What he's trying to prove here for a flat earth is that our perspective gives the illusion of a sunrise or sunset, but he's forgetting that the contrail will never actually look like it touches the ground if the line of sight is unobstructed. Perspective is just objects appearing smaller as the distance from the observer increases. As objects move away, they get smaller and smaller until they reach the vanishing point where it's no longer visible by the observer. It's important to note that perspective does not move objects. It only decreases the size ratios. Here's a representation of what he's trying to show in the video. We have the land, the sky, the contrail, and the sun. Now, if you look at the contrail, we have a 2D representation here that uses the same perspective as in the video, where it gets thinner and looks closer to the land in the distance until it reaches the vanishing point, and it's at its widest above us. What he's very incorrectly trying to say here is that by applying the same thing to the sun, it gives the illusion of a sunrise or sunset. So if his flat earth argument was true, here's what we should be seeing. The sun would be at its biggest when it's overhead and would gradually decrease in size as it moves towards the vanishing point. At about halfway, it would have significantly decreased in size. Then it would be no more than a dot when it's close to the vanishing point until it disappears and can no longer be seen. 
this is definitely not what we see in real life. Huh? The sun doesn't get smaller in size until it disappears from view at the vanishing point. Huh? It stays practically the same size all day and simply crosses the horizon. Even if the sun was only about as high as the contrails, the sun and the horizon would appear closer to each other, but would never touch if unobstructed on a flat surface. Huh? Here are some pictures of sunsets over the ocean, since it's about the best leveled horizon you'll get. Huh? Seeing only half the sun would not be possible over the ocean for what he's suggesting in the video. And before you call fake on these pictures, remember that anyone can see this with their own eyes. Huh? I should also know that there are some videos out there that use camera trickery by using specific lenses that accentuate the scattering of light in our atmosphere and pass it off as being the sun, but I'll make a video specifically about that in the future. To continue, let's illustrate what we actually see in real life, huh? just like in the pictures. What we actually see when we follow the sun throughout the day is the sun staying the same size and just crossing over the horizon. This can be seen by anyone twice a day. So let's get back to the sun's altitude and distance as well as the earth's diameter and apply science to this scenario. If the sun is directly overhead, it'll be around noon for you. The sun will look like it at, it's at its highest point because it's as far as it'll get from either the sunrise or sunset horizons for you. But you'll be at your closest point to the sun. If you're experiencing a sunrise or sunset by having the sun just crossing the horizon, you'll be at the furthest point from the sun where you can still see it. And when you're on the other side, it'll be the furthest point you'll get from the sun, but it's already been out of view for half the night. What we have today is hundreds of years of knowledge about our planet, its shape, and its movements. No matter how many times flat earthers want to say something is not proven, it doesn't erase the hundreds or even thousands of years of verifiable evidence just because they don't want to see it. So let's continue to put our scientific knowledge to the test in the same way as we just did for the flat earth argument and see how it all works out with science. We know from our scientific calculations that the sun is on average 149.6 million kilometers away and that earth has about 12,742 kilometers of diameter. This also means a radius of 6,371 kilometers. And for the sake of simplicity, let's just assume that the earth is not changing its distance to the sun as it orbits. The difference between the noon position and the sunset sunrise positions is equivalent to the earth's radius, which we know to be 6,371 kilometers. So if you divide 6,371 by 149.6 million, you get 0.00004258, or a difference in distance to the sun of 0.004%. This is the equivalent of looking at a house that's one kilometer away and moving closer to it by 4.2 centimeters. This is so small that it'll be too subtle of a change for the naked eye alone, and this definitely explains why the sun is not changing size when you're moving plus or minus 6,000 kilometers from it, and why it crosses the horizon instead of just reducing in size and vanishing, as he's suggesting on a flat earth. Flat earth fails to explain the crossing of the horizon, tries to pass perspective as something that moves objects, huh? and fails to even mention that the sun doesn't change size even though it's, his argument is based on perspective. Huh? Science, on the other hand, is perfectly able to reconcile real-world observations with the data we've collected throughout the years. If you like this video and want more Flat Earth debunks, please like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions about a video you'd like to have debunked, put it down in the comments below or come follow me on Twitter or Facebook. Links are in the description. Until next time, thanks for watching and remember, respect your intellect.